come out to Burrumbuttock to the Wirramina Environmental Education Centre. It's just such a great area. There's plants, there's birds, there's flora, fauna, everything here at our fingertips. The idea being that we get two artists, botanical artists, to get uh, our participants to draw a leaf or a plant or a seed. The idea then is to can scan that image and then second workshop is to convert it into a uh, 3D printed model of whatever they've drawn. We have the beautiful Discovery Centre where we can run the workshop um, and the facilities here are great. Welcome everybody to Wirramina. Very glad to have you all here today. I'm Stacey. Um, I'm the Education Coordinator and um, today is also our volunteer day so we've got Sue here and Judy and I've roped them into um, doing our little walk with us because they're very knowledgeable about everything that's happening here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we thought we'd just do a we'll sort of walk through the garden beds here which are where a lot of the flowers and things are which you probably are going to be drawing and painting later on and we'll go over then into the, our restoration area to show you the sort of things we're doing there. It was an area that was just bit of waste ground really around the government dam, not really used for anything at all. We've turned it into a garden of native plants, uh, showing all the beautiful natives that you can grow in your garden, and also a, a woodland, a natural woodland, which we're restoring back to something like it used to be. And this is one that flowers at any time of the year. Oh, if it rains, this flowers. Oh, really? <laughs> the wattles themselves have brought so many little birds in yes, yes, back to where Amena. It's not funny. I always tell people if you want to have birds in your garden, plant wattles. We've been able to bring a lot of the wattles back, and the wattles are so important in the landscape and so important to the wildlife and the habitat. We've had a big increase in the bird life, of course, a lot of different species. 150 species have been recorded in and around Burrumbuttock and lizards, insects. We have wallabies now that never used to be here, occasionally see wallabies, and possums and squirrel gliders. And so we've got quite a diversity here, but there's still a lot of ghosts, a lot of things that have, have gone. Whether we'll ever get them back, I don't know. It's just fabulous. The, the different types of wattle that we saw, from tiny, tiny little plants with the enormous flowers on them, the variety, I, I, you know, I pictured half a dozen. The extremes, the flat leaves, it's just, it's mind-blowing. You have to see it to understand. Um, just saying it doesn't, doesn't give you an idea. I've been here many times really, just wandering around and looking and as unbelievable as it sounds, I have never sat down and drawn anything. So I've thought about it and often said I was going to, so how ideal is this? So I'm here on a beautiful day drawing botanical plants. Botanical art, it's not just about uh, painting flowers and things, it's actually linking, connecting the disciplines of science and art together, which is where it came from. So its important thing is accuracy and the scale of the painting and the detail of the painting and character picked up in a drawing or a painting. So what they've been asked to do is to draw a specimen from a live plant uh, to scale and as accurate as possible and uh, to then um, transfer that to a photocopier where they will do a sort of a graphic line outline that becomes a 3D object. Because I sculpt I'm interested in 3D work and it seems to be you know part of our world now or becoming part of our world. And see that that was uh, something I did turned into a graphic and it's become this darling little you know, I suppose you could make a necklace out of whether it's science or art, I guess. We're going to see a lot more of it. I'm here to do a demonstration and a bit of a workshop. We're going to go through a um, presentation to begin with and then um, we're going to move on to talking about a little bit of 3D printing and how we went around making your artwork into 3D prints. 3D printing is basically making a 
physical object from a digital, um, digital file. There's a lot more 3D printing you find actually going into mechanical use or design, prototypes, that sort of stuff, fashion. So people are taking 3D printers to places that you wouldn't even think, think of. This is done with a metal printer. Basically it's designed to be, act like bone. I love seeing people uh, once it's, it all clicks, how they look and thinking, oh my god, this is fantastic. <laughs> so it's yeah. designed to get really as best quality as you yeah. can. Yeah. We have come here to learn about um, how the 3D system works, which has been really, really amazing for me to see the potential that what you can do. And in the arts, it would be fantastic. All the, um, <coughs> the wiry stuff and the brasses. Mm -hmm. So it's all done with a pen? All done with a pen. Mm. Wow. See these raised bits? I thought, oh, if I could have got more, I could have got more 3D form in there. Yeah, there's so much potential in the yeah. Yeah. This is fun. I think I'll get a pen. <laughs> because I can see um, how I could use it for um, sculpture, and like literally, it is drawing in the air. This is science and art together. Perfect, perfect marriage.